Welcome to Panama. Bienvenidos a Panama. Bienvenidos a Panamá. Welcome to Panama, one of the most underrated Central American countries. I'm going to tell you all the tips you need to come here and have the perfect holiday from money, visas, but the best time is to come here, how many days, etc, etc, as well as a lot of tips. So, let's start! Panama has a very liberal visa policy. Pretty much no one in entire America need a visa to come here. Same goes for Europe and a lot of other countries. If you need one, apparently it's not very difficult to get a visa to Panama. But they do ask you some questions to come prepared. They asked me how long I was going to stay, but didn't ask for onward tickets. They also asked me where I was staying. So um, get that address ready before you come. Otherwise, super simple. The currency of Panama is called Balboa and this is what it looks like. Yes, these are US dollars. Panama is the only country I know that doesn't print its own currency. It's exactly tied to the US dollar at the ratio of 1 to 1. One Balboa is one US dollars. But they do have their own coins. So if you stumble upon these, don't think that these are fake or anything else. These are Balboa coins. If you happen to stumble upon a Balboa note, keep it safe. It's worth millions. The last one printed was in 1940s. Now, Cash withdrawals. Do come prepared. Bring some cash with you. You will need it going around. Most of the time, you can pay with cards, especially in the cities, which is really good. There are no extra charges for that. But when you want to withdraw cash, there's not a single bank. And I checked a lot of them. There's a lot of banks here. And not a single one offers free cash withdrawals. It's always more than $5. Some cap it at $250. Others cap it at around $500. So you do want to come prepared with these big bucks. Um, cash, like I said, car payments are pretty good. Contactless payments are also good, although Apple Pay and Google Pay are not widely accepted. Panama is also quite an expensive country. Um, I was expecting that, but the tours are perhaps the most expensive as well as the accommodation. If you are in Panama City, Casco Viejo is perhaps the most expensive part as well. So yeah, don't go to touristy places, book your tours when you're on the ground and that's going to help you saving a few um, of these big bucks. To travel between cities in Panama, I would recommend two options. One is airports. For a small country, they have a fairly good network of airports, but air travel is expensive, so I would recommend doing these for longer distance flights like you know to David or to Bocas del Toro from Panama City. For smaller distances I would recommend trying the shuttles. They are really good, they're punctual and they're quite professional. They're not very expensive like on average 25 to 40 dollars which is a lot better than a lot of other destinations I've, I've been to. And for public transport honestly it, there's nothing online so I was not gonna take a chance so I decided to go with the stuff that is online the shuttles and the airports so I can't really give you much um, options but the only one I used was David to Buquete which I highly recommend it was a lot of fun the best way to get around Panama City is by using Uber that's the most convenient one there are buses but honestly they're more local style and the metro was not very like not very extensive if you want to use the metro you need to buy their metro car. If you're coming to Boca del Toro, the easiest way to get around is by using water taxis. They are on average one to three dollars, depending on how many people you are. Max I've paid is eight dollars to get to Bastimentos Island, and that's pretty much it. But make sure you're not too late, and also you want to take the number of the first boat driver because you can call them and they can come pick you up. If you're going to Boca's Brava, once it hits dark, there is no more boat and that's exactly what happened to me. Be careful. Traffic is a bit crazy in Panama City. Make sure to factor that in, especially if you're driving. Unlike its northern neighbor, Panama just doesn't get enough credit. 
I really think it's super underrated and really beautiful country. So I created an entire playlist for all the destinations, things to do, as well as travel guide. So click on the link above and check it out. The language in Panama is firmly Spanish. Now I thought because of the tourism, especially in Panama City, people would speak more English. No, everyone speaks Spanish. I was really surprised in Panama City, by the way. But in Boquete or Bocas del Toro, a, a few more people speak um, English because of all the tourism. Other languages, even less of a chance. So download your Spanish language pack and learn a little bit. It's quite fun. I've been doing it on Duolingo and it helped me a lot. The best time to visit Panama is late December all the way till April. These are the driest months. And now when you say driest, people think that's not gonna rain. It does rain, but the good thing is it rains and it quickly gets dry, rains quickly gets dry. I would recommend coming a little bit towards the earlier of December because it's the start of season, shoulder season. And there are not that many people here yet. Also, when you come to the main season, which is after Christmas, January, February, things are very expensive. So make sure you don't come like right at the peak of the season. Just come in the shoulder season, which is the best. The worst time to come here is October. That's the rainiest season and you don't want to be here when that happens. How much time to spend in Panama, you ask? So my recommendation is the bare minimum is seven days and you'll just be touching a few things. I'm here for two weeks and I don't think it's enough because I'm just doing the main highlights of the country. If you have more time, I would recommend at least three to four weeks if you want to go a bit deeper. So you have a lot to do here from hiking adventure in Boquete in the north in the highlands. There's beautiful beaches on the Pacific and both on the Caribbean side. You have Santa Catalina for the amazing surfing beaches. You have Panama City, Canal, Canberra Villages, San Blas Islands, the Maldives of Central America. So seven days at the very minimum, 10 days if you're passing through, two to three to four weeks if you have more time. I met a lot of people in Panama and with the exception of the tour providers in Bocas del Toro, everyone has been super nice and friendly. A special thank you to Paula, Natalie, who I met in Boca Brava on the tour, who gave me a lot of suggestions. People were a little bit more reserved in Panama City, but that's a big city, right? Everywhere else, they are like super amazing, really friendly, helpful, really nice and friendly and smiley. So I have to thank everyone who I met, who made my trip absolutely amazing. I love you, Panamanian people. Mwah. While you enjoy Panama, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can bring you some more amazing travel destinations. A lot of them you don't even know you need to go. So subscribe now. Panama is a safe country to visit even if you're a solo traveler like me. I had no problems whatsoever. Even I was like walking around on my own in the dark after hours, like I had no problem whatsoever. The only two things I would say is use your common sense. Two, I would say do not go into the dodgy areas or anywhere that's dark in Panama City on your own when there's like no one around. So if you just follow a little bit of like common sense, you will have no problem. They're also much, much safer compared to their southern neighbors. So don't be scared. Come have a great time in Panama. There are a few different phone companies in Panama, so you have plenty of choice. But here are a few things to know. One, do not get your SIM card at the airport. It's a lot more expensive. Walk into any store in the city and they will be able to give you, it's called like that. They have a little sign on the door. Um, so most of the companies offer this deal where you get like unlimited internet, phone, text, everything for $5 a week. So that's exactly what I got because it's perfect. Um, I would recommend Claro or Mass Mobile. Actually, Mass Mobile is the best one. I got Tigo the first week. It didn't work so well. Uh, when I switched to Mass Mobile, it worked perfectly. So yeah, go for Mass Mobile. It's the best choice. Internet is generally quite good. Reception is also quite good. Even on the islands, like when I was at Boca Brava, it wasn't the best, but it was it worked basically, which I wasn't expecting. Generally, Wi-Fi is available pretty much everywhere and the speed is quite good. Most hotels offer it for free and the speed is also great. So if you're working remotely, you will have no problem in Panama. 
In Panama, they use the US Australia style plugs. So make sure you bring a converter because I have not seen a lot of people offering these. I've heard conflicting information about whether you can drink tap water in Panama or not. So on the islands, it's a definite no. In the cities, they told me it's not safe. But I also got like tap water served to me in restaurants. So exercise caution. And if you're in doubt, just use like big bottles of water. Just refill them with your own refillable ones. Pack yourself some sunglasses, sunscreen, loads of it actually, insect repellent flip-flops at beachwear is a lot of beautiful beaches here and you will need all of this it is quite expensive at the touristy places here also make sure to bring insect repellent and you can buy your hat here because you know panama hats you have to buy it in panama make sure you book your tours when you are in panama but not online because the difference was quite a lot make sure to apply your sunscreen even when it's cloudy because it was cloudy today and i didn't apply any and look i am sunburned so be smarter than me <laughs> make sure to pack yourself an umbrella because no matter what time of the year you're coming to panama it could rain at any time like seriously pack yourself an umbrella the good thing is it doesn't keep raining the whole day so it will rain for a bit then it's gonna be sunny and then it's gonna rain for a bit so don't despair just because it is a little bit rainy when you wake up. When you come to the islands, please, please, please take your trash with you because these islands are really beautiful but increasingly being laden with a lot of trash. Please do your part and take it with you. Also use the barrier-friendly sun cream that's to protect whatever's left of the corals here, especially if you go snorkeling. Woohoo, you have all the information for Panama now, so it's time to start exploring this beautiful country. I've made an entire playlist that will take you from Panama City to some amazingly stunning islands and also some more great adventure, hiking and a lot of beautiful waterfalls. Tons of surprises, so click on the link above and check out the playlist starting with Panama City. Guys, this is Brown Boy Travels. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. If I've missed something, please let me know. Also, give me some suggestions about your country. I will see you in the next video. Until then, you have an amazing day ahead. Mwah.